Hello and welcome to your new Switchblade Elite 2.3. My name is Chris Jackson and I'm the head integrator here at Vision Aerial. Um, so before you take off for your first flight, there's a couple things that we want to make you aware of. So the first thing we want to make you aware of is that we've added remote ID capability to meet FAA requirements. Um, this allows the pilot to broadcast his or her operator and drone's location. Um, for first time setup, we're going to dive into our GCS and we're going to slide down on the GCS. We're going to open our radio status tab and then we're going to hit our remote ID tab over at the top right of the screen. From there, we're going to make sure that enable RID is turned on. Then we have a 10 digit number that we need to enter in. This is going to be the manufacturer specific number, which for any Vision Aerial aircraft, it's going to start with 17885. The second five digits is going to be your aircraft's individual serial number. So after you have that entered in, go ahead and enter in the operator's name, the flight name if you have one, flight area information including floor, ceiling, and radius. After that's all set up, the pilot will want to monitor the bottom of the screen to see where it's reading info. And you'll want to make sure that it's reading ready to arm equals yes and detected RID device equals true. Once those are both achieved, then your system is good to go and you can enter back into flight deck. Another thing we want to make you aware of is that in order to maintain compliance with the FAA and as an added safety feature, the RID tab will need to be accessed and verified after every startup of the drone. The second thing we want to make you guys aware of is during colder weather, you might experience a little bit longer of a startup time. Um, this is due to an upgraded thermostat to monitor the autopilot's IMU temperature. Um, the main thing you need to be aware of is that the autopilot's IMU has to reach 45 degrees Celsius before it allow you to take off. The third thing we want to make you, uh, make you aware of is that pilots are now going to have to take off to 10 meters before they can start an automated mission. Uh, we've done this for a couple reasons. The first being that it helps ensure a safe departure. Um, 10 meters is roughly 30 feet and uh, usually higher than most of the obstacles surrounding you. And when the drone is taking off to its first waypoint, it's gaining in altitude, so it makes it a little bit safer for everybody. Um, additionally, during our trainings, we teach as a best practice, the pilot um, should always be doing takeoffs and landings. Um, the closer you are to the ground, the riskier any mission is, whether you're in manned or unmanned aviation. Um, so we always recommend that the pilot do takeoff and landings. Another thing we've upgraded is our drivetrain. Uh, with this update, we're now able to achieve 30 minute true mission times, and we've updated our top speed from 12.5 meters a second up to 15 meters a second. Our next upgrade has to do with our landing gear. We've upgraded these to make them more field serviceable and our servos are more powerful and damage resistant. Another upgrade we have is our mechanical and electrical payload connection system. So the first thing here is we've upgraded a plate on the ventral side of the aircraft from plastic to aluminum, making it more robust. Next, we updated the primary power cable to a magnetic housing which ensures a stable connection throughout the flight. Additionally, we've improved our HDMI port for better ergonomics, and we've added an additional XT30 power connector for payloads that might require just a little bit more juice. One of our next updates is for our batteries. So we've upgraded to these color-coded battery caps here rather than our rubber bands. Um, so these slide on to the end of the battery terminals and help prevent uh, any dust or damage from getting into those batteries. Another update is that we've removed LiPo battery chemistry from flight deck. We've done this because solid states have proven to be more efficient and higher performance, giving us longer flight times. However, with that, a warning that we want to make you aware of is that if you are using LiPo batteries, you'll have to monitor the voltage rather than the battery percentage, as that'll be inaccurate. Finally, we've also made some case upgrades. We've upgraded to a more durable foam. We've added custom payload inserts, and we've changed the serial number to a metal place card rather than stickers to help identify the 2.3 versus the 2.2 model aircraft. All right, so that's the end for our updates on our Switchblade 2.3. Um, before your first flight, I recommend that you check out the uh, release notes and check out the new documentation, and feel free to reach out if you have any questions.